Microsoft released the next version of its team software in preview this week. I take a look at whether it's worth testing the new software before it hits general availability later this year, the new features and some problems that you might encounter. So let's quickly go back to March 2017 when Microsoft released Teams worldwide for general availability and its new Teams app. Now the classic Teams app, which you're probably still using today, was released at the same time and is based on Electron. Now Electron is a cross-platform programming framework that allows Microsoft to essentially code once and have it run on Windows, Mac and Linux. Now the only problem with Electron is that it's very resource intensive and if you're using Teams, especially on a low powered notebook, you'll probably notice that the app is really slow and clunky. Now if we roll forwards to June 2021 when Microsoft first announced Windows 11, they also started talking about Teams 2.0, a new consumer version of the app that is baked into Windows 11 and it's based on Microsoft WebView 2. But the main advantage is that they're able to develop a Teams app that just runs much faster because it's less resource intensive. At the same time, they also mentioned that there will be a new work and school version of Teams that would be based on the same technology as the consumer version that's baked into Windows 11. And that's the version that finally, two years later, that Microsoft has announced is now available in preview. So let's take a look at the new version of Teams and five reasons why you might want to test it out right now. So here's the new app and you can see that it looks very similar to the classic Teams app. The look and feel is updated a little bit, but basically the layout and look is the same. Now, the first reason why you might want to use this updated app is, of course, performance. Microsoft has talked this up and they say that basically it uses 50% less memory and they've been able to get twice the speed out of it across most operations, things like application launch, joining a meeting, and things like that. And if you just click around the app, it does seem a lot more responsive than the classic Teams app that we have today. So here I can start a call with Argo and I think that he's probably sleeping. Now, does this have the same performance as a native app? Well, no, because it's not a native app, but does it feel much faster, more responsive? Absolutely, yes. Now, I think you'll really see the benefits of this if you're using a notebook and of course you're on battery. The existing classic Teams app can really drain batteries very quickly, but I think this new version of the app is gonna be really great for people who are on the move and need something that not only performs, but doesn't drain their battery extremely quickly. Now, the second reason you might want to use the new Teams app is the addition of something called Account Manager. Now, if you're used to using Teams on mobile, you'll know that you can switch around different Microsoft 365 tenants without having to log in and out continuously. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case with the classic Teams app. But now in this new preview version, you've got something here called Account Manager, and this allows you to switch between the different tenants that you have connected without having to log in and out. Another great thing about this is that if you're logged into a particular tenant, I'm in my developer tenant here, and you get messages and notifications in another tenant that's connected to the app, you will also see those notifications. And you can see there that I've got two chat messages waiting for me over at BWW. So this is a great improvement for people that work across different tenants. And it's been a long requested feature. Now, another reason that you might want to upgrade to the new client is the new channels view. Microsoft have been talking about this since Ignite last year, and they've refreshed the way that channels are displayed. So if I come over to Teams here, and let me try and find a channel when there's actually some activity. So we just got a little pop up here saying that channels have got a makeover. So the main thing that you're going to notice here is that posts now go from top to bottom. So a little bit like, you know, social media where you post at the top, of course, not at the bottom. So that should make the whole experience just a little bit more familiar. And Microsoft hopes that it's going to increase engagement. You can also pop out these conversations. So, so these conversations are still threaded. I know that not everybody's a big fan of that, just like 
not everybody's a big fan of a threaded email, but you can now pop out these conversations so I can pop that out into a separate window so you can focus on just that conversation. Now, I'm a little bit on the fence about threaded conversations, but anything's got to be better than the chaos that goes on over in chat. If you need to organize information and find it again quickly, if you're working on a long term project, then really a team channel is the best place to have those conversations. Now, that's pretty much it at the moment with the new channel view, but Microsoft is promising some updates to this as we go forward during the year. So they're going to add a summary pane. I assume that's going to involve some stuff with artificial intelligence. That's going to give you some you know, information about what's going on in this channel and allow you to quickly access pinned threads. So you can still pin a thread just like you could in the classic app. So I'm going to pin that thread. And in the new summary pane, you'll be able to see a list of all your pinned threads. But that feature isn't available yet at this stage. So the fourth reason why you might want to update to this new preview is a better download experience. So if you want to download a file in the classic app, there was always this weird thing that it just kind of dump the file into your downloads folder and you've got this weird little notification at the bottom. Now in the updated app, because this is based on WebView 2, which in turn is based on Microsoft's Edge browser, you get a more browser-like download experience. So let's say that I want to download this file. I'm going to click download. And instead of the notification at the bottom here, you get the option here at the top to manage this download. So while it still by default puts it into the downloads folder, you can jump straight to the downloads folder. You can search downloads here if you want. And I just prefer this experience. It's not ideal. It still doesn't give me the option to save it to a particular location. But nevertheless, I think this is a step in the right direction for downloads in Teams. Now, the fifth reason that you might want to update to this preview is that you're likely to see new features come to the preview first. Now, when Microsoft made its announcement on Monday, they also said that there are 90 new features coming to Teams over the next year. Things like 3D avatars, there's a new files app that's coming to Teams that's going to go into preview in April, and a whole load of other things that are coming to Teams. Now, I don't know how many of those new features they're going to roll into the classic Teams app as well. I expect they will roll some of them into there because we don't know exactly if they're going to retire the classic Teams app. But nevertheless, if you want the latest and greatest, then I think probably you're going to get those in the preview. And as you saw, the new channels experience is already available in the preview version of Teams, but not in the classic legacy app at this stage. I've been using the preview version of Teams for the last week and it's pretty good. It's stable. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. But there are a couple of things that you should bear in mind if you decide to test it. The first thing is you can't add new tabs to Teams channels. It's a bit of an odd omission at this stage, um, but for whatever reason, you can't do it. So if you have a look here in this channel, you see I've got post and files, but there's no option here for me to add a new tab. Even here, I don't have the ability to add a new tab. So you'd have to go back to the classic app or open up Teams in a browser if you want to add a tab to your channel. Another strange thing that may not matter to a lot of people, but some people will use them, is that commands don't work in the preview version. So in the classic Teams app, you can come to the search dialog at the top and you can type commands. I don't know, like find or setting your status to be right back they're completely missing in the preview. So I don't know whether Microsoft is deprecating commands in Teams or whether they intend to add them back into the new version at some point. But that's something that you should be aware of. And just quickly, I want to say that if you're an advanced user of Teams, I don't know if you've got Teams Premium doing all sorts of things that maybe I never do with Teams, then of course, maybe this preview is not for you right now. So how do you get access to this new preview? Well, your IT department is going to need to enable it in your tenants, and then they're going to need to decide who gets access. So if your IT department is running a trial or a pilot of this new preview app, you can maybe volunteer yourself, ask if you can be added to it. Once you've been added to the preview, you will see a toggle switch in the classic app and you just toggle it to on. Then it will say, you know, do you want to opt into the new preview? And it will download the preview version. And you can always switch back to the classic version by just switching the toggle back. 
So it's relatively risk-free, but you know it is in preview, so there are bound to be some bugs. There are some features that definitely are not enabled yet in this preview. So you need to think carefully about whether you want to test it at this stage. But of course, there will be some benefits, especially for people who are on low-powered devices, notebooks. If you're on a reasonably powerful desktop device, then maybe there's not a huge advantage to using the new preview at this stage. So we've waited a long time to see this updated client for Microsoft Teams. It's actually version 2.1 that's in preview at the moment. Now, of course, maybe with the exception of performance, there's nothing revolutionary here, but I think performance was the main gripe that most people have with the current classic app. I can't wait to see this roll out more broadly when it hits general availability later this year. But if you're already using the preview, I'd love to know what you think about it. Have you experienced any problems any bugs, any features that you rely on that are not available in the preview at the moment, please let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this from Petri, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But I'm going to leave you with another video that you might find useful, so do check that out, and I'll see you next week.